do you have some photographers who will do one thing really, really well? You know, they'll underwear ads or, um, you know, out in the country or in the city or, or whatever. And they do that one thing, they do it really well, and, and you don't go to them for a multitude of things. Lou has the ability to shoot, you know, someone on the back of a tractor and have them look amazing. And the next thing you know, she's doing this really high fashion, um, you know, French Vogue look uh, to a photo shoot. Her ability to switch and change directions on a dime is, not, is just unbelievable. I'm, um, I'm a tortured artist as myself, so I can't ever be satisfied with the status quo and what has already been done. I have to do more. And as you age, you start to really understand that essence of time and the significance of doing something when you think about doing it, when an idea comes into your head. You know, I look at the concept of a still photograph differently than a movie or a video. And even though I love the idea of a video, I think that the creation of a stopped moment will remain as significant. Maybe not on the same level as video is moving into our world, but I still think the concept of a art form and a still moment is mesmerizing to people, as I know it's mesmerizing to me. I'm truly addicted to that concept of creating that art statement. When we were on some of these locations this week, um, there were several times when people would say, why did you pick this spot? We can get, you know, a clear access down, straight down, and I could be directly over um, and shoot some lay down shots where the model's laying right on the hood of the boat or on the, in the seat of the boat and shoot just from a different unexpected vantage point. Um, we're going to do a couple life shots, lifestyle shots first, shooting at the boat in the water on another boat, and then we'll come back to this when we change the whole like dynamic of the shoot, and we can have a little more edgier feel. Shoot straight down on it. You know, how did you decide this location? We might be outside, we might be inside, and some of that would be so I could stop a motion or stop and make a you know a recording of a moment at any time through the whole day because I could work the location. So as I've aged, I also want to do less work to get the job done. So I will pick some place that I can get my money's worth and get my physical worth at the same time. My side of photography dealing with fashion is a labor intensive job and it truly is, but it's creating an illusion and creating a perception that you need to produce for a client that's trying to sell a product or a person who's trying to sell our mood, or someone who's trying to sell themselves. From now on, <laughs> all the gear, everything goes in my car. So the outfits we picked, the bathing suits we picked, kind of have that whole 20s vibe, very vintage Chanel. Um, we went, I actually found them um, at vintage stores, which was great. And we decided to go with bright colors, one um, being red, more of the ruched feeling, and then the other one more of a two-piece high-waisted feeling. We're about to do a 1920s kind of flapper, a kind of early Chanel look on the end of the dock. I was in college, in the middle of college, and my father passed away. And it was a shock to me and my family and I was in the middle of school and I wasn't in a happy place after my father passed away. My mom walked out to me. I was sitting by our pool and she gave me his camera bag and she goes, wouldn't you like to have this? And I started taking pictures with it over the summer. And the next thing I knew I was fully in, entrenched in photographing things and people. And I went back to college and continued on this path and I came home and told my mom I wanted to change my major and get into photography and I was fully expecting her to be unhappy because she'd spent so much money on my education and um, she agreed she said it's gonna add you know time it's in a different department from what you're into if you really want to do this it, let's do it now let's get going with it and I was like okay and you know, it was, I think she was looking for me to find something I was passionate about.
When I decided to shoot for Playboy, my mother didn't want to speak to me for a while. She accepted the fact that I did it and that I wanted to do it and I, she understood why I chose to do it because I knew it would take me to the next level. And that wasn't an illusion, but it was a significant thing. It was like a big building block to bring attention to me. It's like 1970s high fashion. You just, on the first shot, she nailed it. One, two, three, <laughs> give it to me. Are you really sure you want to do this? I had a lot of questions, you know, presented like that. And I, I was really torn about it in the beginning because to be honest with you, it didn't pay me a lot for what the subject was. I took that assignment in my mind and that decision and I lived that out. I never allowed any of it to be distasteful or if I said, you know, I don't want to do that in that way, let's try it in this way. I always seemed to have that, I kept my look and my edge and my feel. Hi, I'm Lou Freeman. Welcome to my new DVD series called Look Fabulous, featuring lifestyle, fashion, and glamour photography. Yeah, put the grid on the background and put that light up there in the shrubs and put it toward the back. You know, so the light, there's some separation on the background. I'm going to teach you some of my best secrets on lighting, lighting setups, creative setups, posing, hair and makeup and styling, and how to work in inclement situations. This week, I created a series of photo shoots that kind of touched on every aspect of photography that I have been fortunate enough to participate in. I wanted to kind of give an experience of what it was like to be on a real commercial job with me. What I'm trying to do and my experience of sharing this week is to share how many awesome, amazing lighting situations you can come up with, combining natural light and fill, and try to give a good description of what lifestyle photography really is. We planned the clothes, the hair and the makeup, uh, hired models, and basically put a whole concept together that can give all of those descriptions and educate um, through that vehicle. Never lie to them. To I give personally them more believe confidence. that everyone can be made to look beautiful and the what best I, What I mean is if, if, if things aren't turning out right, do you still purposely try to build them up? Christina started modeling because when she was a child, she had a speech impediment and she never learned phonics. So she had some learning issues and the children were very cruel to her. She was also the tallest in her class since kindergarten. So being the youngest in her class, having learning issues, she developed a lot of insecurities. Everybody has insecurities. I mean, it really depends on like what mood I'm in. I mean, some, some days I wake up and I think I'm too big or I think my face is bloated. Sometimes, you know, sometimes people don't know that they don't, they really honestly don't think they're attractive. And they might be thoroughly attractive. Getting into modeling and being successful, I think, you know, just builds people's confidence. Starting out, um, I think, you know, most models are really self-conscious. Am I good enough looking? Am I smart enough to be able to do this? You know, will I be able to succeed? So sometimes it's actually taking a, a young girl who maybe wouldn't have felt as good about herself and making her see the best version of her, you know what I mean? Some people identify with all the wrong things. Some people think only someone like Christina, who's 5'11", 5'10", is beautiful because she looks like a supermodel. Some people, I find so many beautiful things in so many different kinds of people. So I try to bring that, I try to find the beauty in them. And when I have that person that's hesitant, I make sure I show them over and over and over again. And when they see it, then they relax and they sort of give them, give me permission. And that trust is significant. There's a lot of people that come to me and they want me to take them to the place that they want to be. I'm going to take these pictures from today and put them on a comp card and send them up to New York and hopefully they'll like me. And I think they will because she's taken some awesome pictures. One in 1,000 models makes a living. 
a living, not a lot of money. We knew that modeling and being her structure, her height, her beauty was a gift that God had given her. It's hard for, I think the illusion is that everyone thinks they have a fabulous life and they make all kinds of money and travel all over the world. And it's in, in, in essence, the opposite of that. The traveling was an issue and not knowing the industry as far as we had heard the horror stories about photographers, um, misleading children and misleading people in the industry. And we wanted to make sure that we met the right people and worked with the right photographers, people who would take care of my child and lead her in the right direction. We're in Lake Martin, Alabama, about to start a really great um, fashion shoot that's going to have kind of a retro 20s, roaring 20s feel. I think the media definitely puts a lot of pressure to be a certain weight or to have a certain look. Does it have a positive effect or an, and a negative effect on children who are looking up to models who are so thin and so unhealthy? Yeah, the pressure is not very good because even me, they tell me that I'm not skinny enough, that I have to keep getting skinnier and that's not right. I've seen some models that you know, we're not healthy, and also I'm not comfortable answering that. That's a double-edged sword. I think that the magazines kind of can portray things in the wrong way sometimes and making you feel like you have to look a certain way for your man or you have to be beautiful. And, you know, that's not necessarily what I'm trying, you know, what we try to convey to the, to the younger girls that we work with. I think the media, you know, really pumps that into, you know, our blood to the extent that, you know, who wants to be mediocre? Who wants to be so-so? Everyone wants to be amazing. Even my agent, she's like, you need to lose weight. You have to lose like an inch around your hips and two inches around your thighs. And I work out all the time and I eat very healthy. Right now, lean back like this. Kick, kick your hips to the, the side. So it's kind of encouraging bad eating habits. It, it, it can get a little crazy there because, you know, it, they expect models to be very young. The age range of the models that I work with are anywhere from, you know, really, usually the average age is around 14 to 17. I mean, that's like where you get them in their prime, I guess you could say. I'm 17 years old. I am 19 years old. I am in my 20s. <laughs> I'm 19. In my 20s. <laughs> My late 20s, we'll put it that way. Over time, I'm constantly talking to the models and posing them. I've, I've reached a point where I can make someone who hasn't been in front of the camera look like they have. And in this particular circumstance for this shoot this weekend, we had lots of things happen at the last minute where we prepared for everything, we bought the clothes, we you know, rented costumes, we pulled together the location, the gear was sent here, we all flew here, and suddenly our celebrity host canceled because she had to be on a TV show and couldn't get here in time. Uh, we balanced it back and forth from day to night to day, to Saturday to Sunday, nothing would work. And finally I just said, okay, I'm not gonna deal with this. We have you know, so many people at stake, the clothes are here, we, they, we can't go back now, we have to move forward. Uh, one of the girls that we're working with for this um, set of shoots, it's her first time ever modeling. And if we didn't actually know that, you would absolutely never know. Damn. It's red, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's like, red hot, red alert. This is my first photo shoot ever, and it's very nerve wracking, but Lou's awesome, and she's been giving me some great advice, and helping me out, giving me positions to do, which is very helpful. You scooted me across the way for a little bit. I believe that you could not tell that the girl was a first time model working with Lou because she was working with Lou. Lou is so incredible with direction and really pulling out the best from her subject, like which, whoever model, whatever model it is, she's really good at making them feel comfortable and feel like they can achieve and they can, you know, they can 
um, give and deliver the the look and um, the passion and everything that she's looking for. So, I, I mean, she's incredible. She's so good at making people feel comfortable. I don't think it's something she tries to do. I think she just innately enjoys talking to people. Can you do like, kind of like a scary witch? Okay. Or like really get kind of creepy? And then kind of every once in a while, there's like, okay, you know, hold it. Okay. I like when you're gonna, your right arm in the back. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's, perfect. that's perfect. Because then you work toward her. When I shoot, if I don't feel good or if I'm not comfortable with the photographer or anything, it, it, I, it definitely is seen directly through the camera. I didn't know coming down here what was going to happen, and I didn't know that the entire time I wasn't going to be wearing a bra. Um, but knowing that Lou was behind the camera and had these ideas, I, I knew that she was going to take care of me and make sure that I didn't look too over the top or too old or do something that I wasn't comfortable with. All right, relax. It's her presence and the way that she talks to you because she makes you feel like she's not over and above you and better than you. She's very humble. What we experienced this week with Christina in front of the camera was truly amazing. I think yesterday I watched her go from being a girl to a woman in front of my camera and so did everyone on the set. After all the shoots were done and we just got to hang out last night, I got to talk to Lou and she told me how proud she was and she's She's so important in my life that it was like one of those moments that you can't take back. It was really cool. And it, it meant a lot to me. She just told me how proud she was and that she was so glad that she met me and got to find me and help me become this person that she knew I always had. And the fact that she could see me go from like just so much potential to actually becoming the person that she thought I could be was really awesome. You know, I love to do what I do. And I think at the end of the day, the most important thing for me is that I make a difference in people's lives for one second or for one hour or for five hours. I take the picture for myself and I'm paid for it. But the most amazing thing happens when you connect with someone and you disarm them and you give them the confidence that they need to feel beautiful. Because I think everybody in the world wants to be beautiful and feel good about themselves at any age. And as I'm aging myself after doing this for 32 years, it's still so amazing to look at someone's eyes and see that they want to know if they can be attractive or, you know, they're at this good place with their life. They might have just had a baby and they want a portrait taken. To, to bring that to them, it's like a crazy, gift of love in a bizarre way. And the way I handle myself with the subject and trying to get out of them something that they can go with so they feel handsome or beautiful or hot and sexy or whatever the goal is of the photo is really rewarding to me to nail it and bring it home.